Thank you. 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 Thank you.
if you are going to be an athlete for a while, if you're going to go into professional sports, some of you may, some of you may not. Some of you may have no thoughts of being in professional sports, that's fine. But whatever you do, chances are the connections that you make as an athlete now will help later. Whether it's getting a job out of college, looking at grad schools, um, talking to fellow alums, people who've been following you as a student athlete, if they're alums, if they're seeing you play, these are people that you're going to want to talk to again in a year, five years, ten years. They may be able to help. They may hire you. Who knows? Interact with fans. Just have fun. If you're on the field, if you're on the court, if you're on the ice, you're kind of separated from the fans. You can hear them cheer, but you don't know who they are. They don't know who you are. Here's a way of interacting a little bit and having fun with them. And there are lots of ways to have fun. We'll have a few examples in a little bit. You're representing St. Lawrence. More so when you're off the field and off the court and off the ice than at any other time. Because as an individual, you have things to say. You are online. You are talking. You're sharing photos. You're talking up the games. You're promoting events. You're pushing charities. Whatever you're doing, you're representing St. Lawrence, and it's a great opportunity using social media to reach a new audience that you wouldn't necessarily have if you're just standing in the line at the, at the dining hall talking to two or three people. So you can have lots of people. And you can have fun with meeting people. You can go chat with people about the game. Um, when, uh, when I go to women's hockey games at Cornell, there is a huge turnout of athletes from other teams. And these are people who are coming out and supporting another team because there are connections between these people. There are social media connections. Some of them go because they've been told to by their coach. But a lot of them are there because they want to be there. And that's some of the connections that you can find on social media. You don't necessarily know everyone at St. Lawrence, but here's a way of meeting some of the other people who are out there. You can think about where you want to be on social media. Is there anyone in here who's not on Facebook? No. <laughs> Facebook free. <laughs> <laughs> More power to you. It's, uh, that's not a question that people raise their hands for very often. <laughs> Usually people are on Facebook. And what you do on Facebook is up to you. You can just connect with the people that you really know in person. You can have a very narrow set of friends. You can interact with your family members. People's grandparents are on Facebook. I don't have any grandparents left, but if they were still alive, I can't imagine them being on Facebook. The people's grandparents are on Facebook, and it's, it's kind of fun to watch them sometimes. Um, but you get to decide how open you want to be. Do you want to post everything in public? Do you want to have a page for your team where you can reach out to fans and share pictures? <coughs> share what's going on, share the events. And that's up to you. Some people want to be really free with, uh, with what they post, and some people really don't. There's a stream of consciousness thing on the internet that, that works well for some not for others. Twitter is very similar. Twitter especially is a stream of consciousness place. You can tweet all day, and people will see some of it, not necessarily see all of it, and that's fine. Um, Twitter does have the option of having private messages so that you only share with people you approve. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. From my point of view, I think Twitter should be open to the extent that it can be. Unless you have a reason to hide your tweets, unless you want to be very secretive about what you're tweeting and who you share it with, generally you want to have Twitter be as open as possible. Instagram is just pictures. It's screenshots of the crazy text that you got last night. It's pictures from the field. It's pictures of your lunch. All kinds of ridiculous things. Um, on Instagram as well, you can decide if you want just anyone to be able to see your pictures or if you want to only allow people to see your pictures if you, if you And that depends on what kind of pictures you want to share. 
if you're posting pictures of family members, you don't necessarily want to have pictures of uh, little kids in public if they're too identifiable. So people have various concerns. And you can make that decision for yourself. If you want to share everything in public, go for it. You can identify where you are. When you post a picture on Instagram, you can specify where you are. And sometimes you may or may not want to do that. You may not want to identify your location. Uh, so think about that when you're doing that. Do you, do you want to be on Foursquare? That's only about location. It's saying, here I am. I'm at this spot right now. You can check in on Foursquare and say, I'm eating at Josie's. Or I'm, uh, I'm at this classroom. And that can be useful. It can be fun to say, all right, my friend just checked in over here, and I'm right next door. I'm going to go say hi. And there's a, a friend of mine in Ithaca who, if I check into the bar downtown, will sometimes pop in and sit down and have a meeting. That can be fun or not. Uh, but it's up to you to decide. Yeah, sometimes I'm all here as much as I'm up. But uh, you get to decide who knows where you are. That, by default, is private and only shares where you are with the people that you specify. So that's a good thing. That's not something you necessarily want to share if you are. LinkedIn, getting back to what we were saying about you might want a job someday. LinkedIn is a good place to be to talk about your skills, your job experience, to look for jobs, to look for people who you are connected to, maybe through a mutual friend who are in a given industry. So that's worth exploring. And there are countless more um, forms of social media. Pinterest seems to be most effective at sharing recipes and knitting patterns. Uh, Tumblr gets ridiculous. People share things and they just keep tumbling on and on. Flickr is just photos. Think about how private you want your account. Do you want to be a public figure or not? And there, are, there are different ways of doing that. I can definitely answer any questions if you have a lot of opportunity for questions at the end. What are some things you want to avoid? Don't be a dick. <laughs> I don't know if you know who Will Wheaton is. He's an actor and he's a writer. But he, he played Wesley Crusher on Star Trek The Next Generation. And he goes and does science fiction conventions. And one of the things that he has started talking about is how when he's in public, some people are really, really nice. The vast majority of people he deals with at these conventions, or when he's doing public speaking in other situations, are awesome people. But some people aren't awesome. Some people are dicks. Don't be a dick. And you especially don't want to be a dick online. About a year ago, last spring, this random New Jersey Devils fan was talking about uh, the Florida Panthers and the Devils. It was in the middle of the, the Panthers Devils um, NHL playoff series. And uh, she was talking about how uh, um, Mr. Yormark, the Panthers GM, was making an ass of himself. And he's <laughs> general manager of an NHL franchise. <laughs> this guy's being a dick. <laughs> now, she didn't have 70 followers for long because other people saw him say this and called him out on it and said, you're being a dick. And she's just a fan. She's speaking up for her team. That's what fans do. Fans are supposed to speak up for their team. To a point. Um, but he was making ass of himself. He makes an ass of himself a lot. I don't know if you've ever seen what this, this guy does. Um, when he gets press that he doesn't like about the Panthers, he makes comments on Twitter about the reporter. There was one guy that he said had been to the buffet table a few times. <laughs> so he's not a nice man. One of the people who uh, noticed and took foreign side. Anyone know who that is? Bob McKenzie. He's uh, he's a St. Lawrence fan. 
So he's here a lot. I've seen him at St. Lawrence a lot because I've been here a lot. Um, and he retweeted all of this stuff. And before long, this girl had more followers than my little one. <laughs> Way more followers after a couple of days. So she said, all right, I can have some fun with this. And she started talking about her favorite charities and sharing links to the things that she thought people should really be coming to. So she took the high road. Always try to take the high road. Um, the devils, of course, saw all this going on and invited her to uh, game six and sit in the, uh, the president's box at the Prudential Center in New York. So she said, all right. She went to the, the hockey game in New Jersey. Um, game seven rolls around, and Mr. Yormark realizes that he's being a dick, or someone comes and says to him, this isn't OK. You're making all of us look like assholes. And he called up Lauren the morning of game seven and said, I'm really sorry. I was wrong. You were wrong too. But I was wrong. And to make it up to you, I want to invite you down to uh, to Florida to see game seven and you can watch me in my office. And she lives in New Jersey. She said, I'm in New Jersey. I said, yeah, I'll put a flight from your dad down. Okay, so uh, she went to the airport and got on an airplane. She called work and said, "I'm not going to be here." And she got to uh, she got to see Game Seven in uh, in Michael Yarmark's box. So think about who might be watching. That's something that Mr. Yarmark figured out. The world is watching sometimes, especially if Bob McKenzie notices what you're saying. But there are, is always the possibility that someone you haven't thought about might be watching what you said. That's me. That was my tweet uh, a couple of weeks ago at RPI. I was at a game at, uh, at the rink there. And some of the fans right near us were really being loud. It didn't occur to me she might be watching. That's uh, Armand the Sword's girlfriend. She saw my tweet. I was pretty embarrassed. So they moved. Enthusiastic is good. That's all right. I didn't say anything too bad, luckily. So you can share what happens. You know you can share things on Facebook. That's how we see all the cat photos. Um, you can retweet on Twitter. If you see something you like, you can just retweet it. Keep in mind that no matter what disclaimers you put on your profile, that retweets do not equal endorsements. If you share something, people might associate it with you, even if you didn't say it. So think before you tweet. Think before you retweet. Think before you share. Mentioning people is good. If you've got fans talking to you about the games, mention them. Fans like that. If you see someone talking about your sport without even directly mentioning you, go ahead and address them. Mention them. Reply to them. That's good. It engages the fans. And getting the fans engaged means they're more likely to come out to your game. They're more likely to follow you, they're more likely to cheer you on, they're more likely to tell their friends to come. And then everyone is happy. <clears throat> yeah, even if it's not your words, think twice before sharing. Don't share private content. Um, Mark Zuckerberg's sister Randy posted a picture on Facebook over the holidays. Um, and her brother created Facebook. You would think she would uh, know how to do Facebook a little better. Um, but she posted a, a photo on her own personal Facebook. And she has a fairly public account. She does a lot of things that are public. She has subscribers on Facebook in addition to friends, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but it didn't occur to her that the private family photo that she posted might go beyond where she thought it would. 
one of the reasons is that she tagged a friend of hers in the photo, and now all of a sudden, all of that person's friends can see the photo also. So one of the people who saw this photo, just random, innocent, family holiday gathering, right? Took the photo and put it on Twitter. And Randy Zuckerberg was not thrilled with that. He said, you can't do that, that's my private photo. Well, there it was on Facebook, and Facebook showed it to me. Why can't I share it? So think about where your stuff might go if you post a photo, if you post a comment. You can have a lot of fun with uh, mentioning people, mentioning organizations. That's a <laughs> Cornell goalie. And just randomly talking about one of the dining halls being out of tater tots. It's all right, there will be more tater tots soon. <laughs> Cornell than any talking to her. You can also have fun with hashtags. How many people in here have used hashtags in Twitter or Instagram? you a heavy hashtag user? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your favorite hashtags? Put you on the spot. Um, hashtag, it's a great day to be a saint. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. That's the group she uh, mentions the most of the tweets. <laughs> All right, who do you mention the most of the tweets? Myself. <laughs> Jessica Campbell, 
and uh, Alyssa Gagliardi, two of the, uh, two of the players, they use each other's hashtags all the time. Almost all of the players on the team use Twitter actively. So they can refer to each other, they can talk to each other constantly, and it's a lot of fun to watch. And it really keeps people engaged. So play with that. If you're using Twitter, if you're thinking about using Twitter, try um, making sure that people are talking about you and more and more people will follow you. Here's another guy who's doing it well. <laughs> Wellesley has been doing Twitter for a while on campus here and he's gotten really good at it. And he didn't know I was going to tell you that. But he's fun to watch. I've been watching him for a long time, even though I'm not usually a Saints fan. I just like college hockey. So I've been following him. As more and more coaches get involved and say, all right, who do we look to for examples? There's one. So if you're not already following those, you should watch me guys. Sorry to embarrass you. <laughs> Got my dog on there, too. He's <laughs> pretty good. Good use of uh, the hashtags. Good opportunity to refer to the uh, the Saints, the main Saints account. Um, that FB hashtag, does that mean you also sent that from Twitter to Facebook? Yeah. My suggestion, and sorry, I'm going to embarrass you again, don't do that. Um, usually, you want to keep Twitter and Facebook separate. Even if you're saying a lot of the same things, even if you want to say the same things on both, if you put that on Facebook, the hashtag doesn't make sense. The Slew Saints account doesn't work. That breaks. You can't follow it. So you probably want to say it again on Facebook and use the link to the Facebook page while you're on Facebook. Um, the link is still good there. But yeah, the hashtag just doesn't make sense. And if you go the other direction, if you have Facebook sending everything you say to Twitter, then half of your Facebook posts will look ridiculous on Twitter because they get chopped off in the middle, and the link might take people back to Facebook or it might not. If you've posted a link on Facebook, sometimes you've written a whole paragraph about the link, and then your tweet has only half of that paragraph because it gets chopped off, and the link on Twitter doesn't take you back to Facebook where you can read the rest. It takes you to the, uh, the eventual link that you have posted on Facebook. So people are going to be scratching their heads wondering what you said if they missed half the conversation. So try to gauge what you're saying and where you want to say it. And even if you want to say it in more than one place, my suggestion is keep it separate. Even though it really is easy to try to use these tools to do the same thing in both places. Because um, you want to use the hashtags on Twitter, you want to reference the Facebook pages on Facebook or the individuals on Facebook, and those things break if you try to do the same thing for a place. Everyone knows your name. If you're a student athlete, you're a celebrity. You might be a celebrity in a very small part of the world, but that's okay. Right here, you're a celebrity. Maybe only for a weekend, maybe only for a season, maybe only for four years. Right here, you're a celebrity. People know who you are. They know your face, because it's been in the paper, it's been in the program of the game. Your name is on the roster. Your name might or might not be on your jersey. I know some of you have your Twitter handle on your jersey. This weekend. That should be fun to watch. You're going to get a lot of people finding you on Facebook. Do you have to friend them? No. You get a friend request from someone, maybe you have mutual friends, maybe you don't, maybe they're at St. Lawrence, maybe they're not. Do you have to accept the friend request? You know. You have to let them follow you on Twitter. If your Twitter account is private and you want to keep it that way, you don't have to. Uh, some of the women's hockey players at Cornell have kept their Twitter accounts private and they let people follow them or not as they choose. I don't know how they decide who is okay and who isn't. Um, that's a decision you have to make yourself. 
if you're on Twitter and someone follows you, do you have to follow them back? You don't have to. It's nice. People like being followed. People like the interaction. But you don't have to follow them. You might already have enough people to keep track of them. That's fine. Um, on Facebook especially, public and friends only posts. If you're on Facebook and you want to let people subscribe to you, you can set up your Facebook account so that you don't have to accept a friend request. People can just watch without being your friend. That's called subscribing. And a lot of public figures have started doing that. It used to be that you had to be a friend or not. It was all or nothing. And individuals who were public figures had to create a fan page that someone could like. They wanted to keep that separate. And they didn't want 20,000 friends. So now that you can subscribe to someone, you might want to have some of your stuff, especially stuff about the team, stuff about upcoming games, you might want that to be public. You might want everyone to see all of that, and that's great. And there might be some stuff that you want to keep private. Family photos, photos from parties, comments about where you're going to be this weekend. If you're going to be traveling, you don't necessarily want to advertise that you can be So you can have friends only stuff. Um, and as I said, on Twitter, unless you really have a good reason, I suggest staying public. And the same is true on Instagram. Generally speaking, you want to have as much as possible out there, because it's, it's good to share. So thinking about your future, once it's out there, it's out there forever. If you post it, even if you delete it, after you realize you shouldn't have posted it, someone might have taken a screenshot. Someone might have copied and pasted it. Someone might remember you said it. Someone might be offended if you said it. Do you want it on the front page of the New York Times? All right, maybe not the front page. Do you want your mom to see it? So think before you post. Think before you tweet. Think before you Facebook. Whatever the case may be, think about where it might go, even if it's friends only, even if you have a private Twitter. One example, that uh, screenshot of Sally's tweet, she has a private account. So you would not have seen that if you were just looking on Twitter if you weren't already following her. So I did a screenshot of that, probably shouldn't have. Don't have it. But she said it, and you got to see it even though she had an offer on you How about photos? Same rules. <laughs> With one more. Don't post it if you don't want your coach to know. And coaches, cover your eyes for a second. <laughs> one of the things that, that I do is social media for a bar in, in, in college town. Have most of you been in Ithaca at one point or another? <coughs> Playing it for now. Um, College Town is the area near campus with a lot of student apartments and several bars. And every once in a while, when I posted a, a picture on uh, on the Facebook for the bar, I get a, an apologetic email saying, hey, I wasn't supposed to be out that night. I don't want the coach to see it tomorrow. Could you please take that picture down? I have no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> but think, think before you share not only pictures of yourself, but pictures of your friend, pictures of someone who might be in the background. Um, just think about where it's going. As for rivalries, you're all pretty fervent Saints fans for good reason. And you want to make sure that you're promoting your team. You want to take the high road, though. Kingster is good, but that's uh, a <laughs> mistake. That's a very common hashtag that we see a couple of times a year. Um, it's 
it's not really polite, that's not taking the high road. But it's kind of tradition at this point, so they do it. Um, think before you post. If it's tradition, go for it. Is there any uh, any rival that you feel that's from anybody? <laughs> yeah. This was uh, last weekend at Lionel Reed, Friday night's game against Yale. There was a whole row of kids wearing these shirts. Um, I don't know who complained. I don't know who thought that this was wrong, that this was vulgar. I'm not a Yale fan. Um, a Cornell police officer went down and told them they couldn't wear those shirts. If they wanted to stay, they had to turn the shirts inside out. One kid wouldn't and got dragged out. He was being polite, he was being respectful, except for the t-shirt, uh, but he got dragged out of the line around. So, think about how far you're going to be. Be respectful, and when the game is over, it's over. You've probably heard that before. Um, it applies on the field, on the ice, one of the reasons for the handshake at the end of a hockey game, for example, when the game is over, it's over. Don't keep taunting the opponents if you want, and they did absolutely. That's not nice. Um, it's understandable, but it's not nice. Thinking a little bit also about what you're allowed to do. NCAA compliance. You probably hear about this from time to time. What are you allowed to say? Who are you allowed to talk to? Remember, even when you're online, you're always a student athlete. You're always representing the same lines. Even if you say out loud, this is my opinion as a private citizen, not as a St. Lawrence student, it's not true. It doesn't help. You are a student athlete. Recruits. You're going to find people who are high school students who may be coming here next year who are already on Twitter, who are already on Facebook. You might have met them. You might have followed their progress in their sport in high school. If you're talking to them, make sure you're doing it in a way that follows NCAA guidelines. If you couldn't say it to them in person or on the telephone, you can't say it to them on Twitter. And that's a little off because you don't really want to think about that on Twitter. You want Twitter to be just a conversation where everyone's having a good time. But you do have to think about those rules. And here's an odd one. No betting on the Super Bowl. <laughs> betting on sports is something that student athletes can't do. But everyone bets on the Super Bowl, right? Can't even bet on the coin toss. Is there an NCAA compliance specialist in the room? Anyone really familiar with the rules? No, we we probably should. <laughs> <laughs> um, Papa John's is doing a promotion where if you vote on whether the Super Bowl coin toss is going to be heads or tails, and you get it right, you're going to win a free pizza. Is that betting? I don't know. While he's voting, and they're probably doing that on purpose because betting is illegal. So, you can probably go ahead and do that. But, it's, uh, is it betting? Think about that. So, also, if you're going to announce in public, hey, I just won the, the free pizza by guessing the coin toss rate, you might want to think twice about saying that. But enjoy the pizza. I voted heads. <laughs> Trolls. They're the mean little creatures under the bridge, but they're also people online who seem to exist only to piss you off. They're rude, they're obnoxious, and they're only there to get your goat, to get you mad. Can you please play better tonight? You suck yesterday. <laughs> Even if they don't say that, that's what they're saying. <laughs> I follow you for this. Stop talking about that. You 
probably are into more than your sport. Whether it's a TV show that you watch every week religiously, or traveling, or really good beer, it's okay. You can tweet about what interests you. A friend of mine is an editor at Macworld Magazine in San Francisco, but he's also a huge Giants fan. San Francisco Giants, not New York. Because his office is like two blocks from AT&T Park. But he talks about the Giants all the time during baseball season. And almost every day, someone says, hey, I follow you because you're a Mac expert. Stop talking about baseball. What? This is my Twitter. Go away. So don't let them get to you. You can answer if you want. You don't have to. That's the nice thing. It's up to you. Someone's going to say that to you. Don't let them get to you. So take the higher road. Always be willing to stick up for yourself or your teammates. But be rational about it. Be respectful about it. And you don't have to answer. You don't have to engage with the troll. And remember, you're always representing St. Lawrence. And if someone's really getting out of hand, you can block them. They won't get to follow you anymore. You will never again see anything that they say. And they won't block you anymore. Go on with your life blissfully unaware of anything and accident. So what about someone who <laughs> wants to impersonate you? I don't know who that is, but it's not me. Just one of those weird things. I'm not really a celebrity. I don't know why I'm a target of this person. Um, whoever it is actually stopped about three years ago. They, uh, the tweets ended in January 2010. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> My mom has never touched a Nintendo. <laughs> I don't have kids or a dog. Twitter on Xbox and series. So I don't know who this is, but you can do something about it. Twitter lets you report in person. Now, they're really clear about it. Fan pages are allowed. If someone picks you as the best St. Lawrence athlete ever and creates a fan page without you, might as well um, be thankful. And uh, if you want, you can talk to them. You can appreciate them. You can share some stuff with them. Or not, it's up to you, but there's nothing illegal about a fan page. Parody is okay too, but parody of a student athlete is probably not going to happen. But Twitter makes a point of saying parody pages are okay. There are parodies of President Obama. There's a really good parody of Queen of England. <laughs> Hilarious, you should go find it. It's a lot of fun. You don't even have to be a, a fan of England. Um, but it's really well done, and it's, it's clever. And it's obviously a parody. So parodies are all right. But yeah, if, if someone is pretending to be you online, put a stop to it. Take control of your brand, because anything that goes out there with your name on it represents you, even if you didn't say it. Um, a friend of mine found this yesterday when she decided to add me on Twitter. She searched for my name. You would think that would work, right? But apparently this is the account that she found, even though it hasn't done anything in three years, and I tweet a million times a day. So who knows why she found that. I knew it was there, and I hadn't done anything about it. I should have. So if someone creates a fake you, you should probably not wait. Clubs will have it. You will say something that you didn't mean to say or that you shouldn't have said. Like I was talking about uh, 
um, the Armada Sport Fan Club in front of Jim and me and how they were shrieking. I shouldn't have said that. Here's a good one. This is just a random um, Dallas Cowboys fan. Josh Ellis speaking for himself. He's a baseball fan. He's excited. Pitchers and catchers report this. Any baseball fans here? A couple. That's fine. Um, so you know, baseball season is coming up, and that's exciting. So here's this guy who said, six weeks of both years in the before. He's excited. Someone else, the category of nobody cares, the NHL is back. From the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> that was someone else in the Dallas Cowboys front office, one of their PR people who has access to their Twitter account and posted from the Dallas Cowboys account. <laughs> At least that's the story. And it's probably true. He's probably an idiot. <laughs> so he posted that. Guess who didn't think it was that funny? He's got the job done. <laughs> so here's the Dallas Stars having fun with it. Cowboys say something asinine, and the stars are having fun with it. So, by the time this had happened, someone else at the Cowboys had noticed this because it had gotten retweeted, it had gotten responded to, someone noticed and deleted it. So the guy who posted it posted it again from his personal account. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's what you should have done in the first place. But now that you've been an idiot and said something stupid in public, you probably shouldn't do it again. <laughs> so people found it and pointed to it again, and then you deleted it again. <laughs> so the Cowboys apologized. An inappropriate tweet that got posted accidentally. Good luck. The stars took the high road. They accepted the apology. So. Take the example of the Dallas Stars, not the Dallas Cowboys. Have fun with it, but take the high road. And if someone apologizes, accept the apology and move on. Now you've got a chance for any questions that you might have. Yep. You mentioned how you get people asking you to take the photos down from the bar. For the weekend, do you take them down or do you not? I take them down. Because I don't want to get it. <laughs> if, uh, I, I could say, hey, you were in public, you did what you did, it's your problem. But there's no point. That, that would be me. And if, uh, if someone is having a good time at the bar, I want them to be able to have a good time at the bar without worrying about whether the picture will still be there if they've asked for it to come down. And it isn't just athletes who ask that the pictures come down. Um, yep. So, I mean, building upon that, the beauty of when some of us were in college is that there weren't 50 phones in a bar or a party or whatever. So, separate from what you do as an individual, the implications of being tagged or, or whatever in a photo are sometimes out of your control. Yep, one. that's actually right. a good Raise point. Awareness. And it, uh, it brings up something that I should suggest to you. Go to your privacy controls on Facebook and set your photo tagging so that you have to approve tags before they're public. Someone can tag a photo that says it's you and your name will appear on it on their Facebook, but your friends won't see it until you approve it. And it won't show up in public searches for photos of you until you approve it. So that's a, that's a good idea. And if a photo of you goes up that you don't like, be respectful about it. Say, hey, I would really rather that not be in public. Could you please untag me or could you please take it down? And you can actually untag yourself from any photo. But if there's a picture that really shouldn't be online at all, go ahead and ask them to take it down. If they won't, and you really think it shouldn't be there, you can uh, report it to Facebook. Say, this is a picture of me, and I think it's inappropriate. And depending on the situation, Facebook will either delete it or even sometimes suspend the user. Um, but 
of course, you want to you want to think that the best way to avoid embarrassing photos is not to be an embarrassing situation, but to do embarrassing things. Come on, we're we're all going to be caught in a situation where we're having fun, we're not really thinking about it, and someone takes a picture that doesn't necessarily make us look great. You might be making a funny face. Who knows? Doesn't matter. Whatever's going on, it's your life to decide what happens. It's your life to share or not, but it's also your responsibility to keep an eye out. So if someone had a photo of you, make sure you go look. If it's a good one, hey, keep it up. If it's not a great photo, but it's not really ridiculous, eh, um, I, I get asked to take down photos that people think are unflattering, even if there isn't necessarily anything wrong with them being there, they're not doing anything illegal. If, uh, if I find out that someone in a photo is 19 and is holding a beer, I'll probably take that down too. But if, if they say they don't look good that day, all right, I'll probably take it off unless there's a whole bunch of other people in the picture who really like it. Then you have to, you have to weigh that. Other questions? Mark, do you find that other schools are putting in, uh, you know, one of the things we don't currently have at St. Lawrence in the athletic department is any sort of social media policy that we're adhering to or, or making the student athlete sign or tell us their Twitter handles. I uh, know Northeastern has put in, we, uh, the women's hockey team played Northeastern, and, and they actually list their Twitter handles on their website, on their bio pages and whatnot. They're taking a much more progressive approach to it. And I guess I have a question for you in terms of what's your sort of view on having a social media policy as an athletic department, and then I'd almost turn the question around to the students in the room and ask, would they be comfortable with that, or is that something that we should explore going forward so that when someone wins the Player of the Year award, we would, on Twitter, recognize them as their, they would release their Twitter handle to us and, and feel comfortable using that versus saying congratulations to their name where they might not even see it. Right, I think there are, there are a couple of ways you can go with that, but for those of you who are about to play a hockey game with your Twitter handles on your backs, um, you're about to toss yourself into the public arena. And there's actually been a backlash on social media policies, especially in the corporate world, the, the courts have just ruled that an employer cannot force an employee not to say something um, that's uncomplimentary about their employer. Might not be smart to do it, but you can't have a policy that forbids it. Can the company retaliate? Can your manager retaliate? Probably. Um, but you can have a policy that forbids it. It's prior restraint, and it's generally speaking not okay. So in terms of policies, I think the only policies that you should probably enforce are the ones that you have no choice but to enforce, like NCAA compliance. You, you risk your own career as a student athlete if you're out of NCAA compliance. If you say something online, or if you say something to a group that you're not allowed to say. Just like if you accept a car as a gift from a uh, from an alum who's a huge St. Lawrence fan. You can't do that. Um, so policies, I don't know. One of the things that you want to think about in terms of should the school identify players by Twitter handle on Twitter? Probably if the students have provided the if you're talking in public and you're okay having your Twitter handle be used, you can't hurt to tell the sports information office because it might be good, it might be useful. It's actually really good on Twitter. And you saw that with some of the Cornell women's hockey stuff. Talking about the individual players using their Twitter handles, A, is fun because the fans get to go follow those folks. B, the student athletes know they're being talked about. Um, if you look at my tweets from last night, I was posting a lot about Cornell women's game against Mercyhurst. And I use the, uh, the Twitter handles that I can manage to remember. Um, some of the players don't really use them actively, and that's fine. So if you're using it, expect people to talk about it. 
other thoughts? Thoughts about what Joe was saying to this? Does anyone in here not want their career in the Does anyone really want their career? <laughs> 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 Self promoter. <laughs> Other questions about our stuff? Has anyone dealt with trolls on Twitter or other places online? Dealt with someone being a jackass? Any opponents yelling at you? Yeah? Parts of band is special. <laughs> they are their own category. Actually, I, I love Clarkson's band, too, and one of the reasons is that they show up. And I've got a lot of respect for fans who travel, parents who travel. We're, at, at minor rank especially, we have a lot of uh, players, parents from opposing teams come to watch a game. Sometimes they're a little weirded out by the enthusiasm, shall we say, at minor fans that went out and get pretty loud and sometimes pretty rude. But people that travel, including bands, people that show up, I got a lot of respect for them. And I'm going to give them a hard time during the game. But after the game, they'll be talking about it. Um, Meg say I tend to show up for Frozen 4 whether Cornell is in it or not. I have actually never been to a Frozen 4 that Cornell was in. I've only been to Frozen 4 tournaments. Not at, and you meet a lot of hockey fans. There were Saints fans in uh, in St. Paul when I was there a couple of years ago. There. there were RPI fans. There were Clarkson fans. There were people wearing jerseys from all over the ECAC, from all over every league in the NCAA. Hockey fans show up. There was someone there from Alaska Anchorage in a UAA jersey. That's great. That's someone who's really into hockey. Their team's not going to make it close to the floor. <laughs> but they're good because they love hockey. That's a, that's a big place to be, somewhere where you're, you're surrounded by fans. Other questions? What's going to happen with the games against the Clarkson this weekend? What? What? What did you say? <laughs> Yeah, they're going to be fun games though. Have you seen the jerseys? You like them? That'll be fun. You'll probably all have dozens, if not hundreds, of followers. <laughs> Any other questions before we wrap up? Thank you all for coming.